Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In today's episode, we're meeting a young couple who lives on a gorgeous floating home in Seattle, Washington. And I think the tour of this beautifully crafted two bedroom, two bath floating tiny home is going to blow your mind. We got really lucky with where we are both in this houseboat and location wise because we do have such an amazing view we have waterfront property but are able to do it in a more achievable attainable way for our lifestyle if you're curious about what it's like to live on the water or live on wheels or just to live in an amazing handcrafted home make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new episode Hi, I'm Lily. Hi, I'm Dylan, and this is Andante. We immediately fell in love with Andante due to its very nautical charm. We learned it had been recently renovated. We thought maybe we'll put an offer out, see what happens. It was accepted, and then before we knew it, we were living on a houseboat. So Andante was built in 1984. There was a man up in, I believe, Vancouver, BC, who built somewhere around 36. Uh, they're called coastal sea homes. So it's kind of a truly a house boat hybrid. As you can tell when you're inside here, it truly feels like a home. When you look at it from the outside, it definitely looks like a boat. And so the name Andante means a slower pace, which I think is perfect for the houseboat lifestyle. When you're on the water, you find this sense of peace. Things kind of slow down a little bit. And then kind of as a nod to the name Andante, we named our little 11 foot Boston Whaler boat Allegro, which is in music theory, a faster pace. So a play off of the original name of this boat. So the houseboat community is pretty... <laughs> <laughs> We own the boat and we pay mortgage on the boat, but we rent the dock space. There's a couple of regular maintenance routines, so like we need to get our boat hauled out every couple of years, have the bottom repainted just in case there's any rot or anything down there that needs to be inspected. So I think that first year was a lot of just figuring out where do we go, who knows how to work on this type of boat. I think some of my favorite parts of this lifestyle are one, being right on the lake. Uh, at the end of the day, if it's hot out, we can just jump right in the water. It's super refreshing or take the paddle boards out. I love watching all the waterfowl come and go. We get ducklings in the summer, goslings in the summer, and just watching them grow up is really a very sweet, surprising detail of, of living on the water. So this is Andante. You can see we're tucked in here really nicely, surrounded by a couple other liverboards as well. So we're situated here, basically a little channel right in between Lake Unit and Portage Bay. There's two bridges on either side. The whole area is kind of really dynamic visually. This over here is actually a drawbridge, so we'll see this one come up and down several times a day. And then behind the boat, or uh, in front here, a narrow channel where we see boats kind of passing from Lake Union over into Lake Washington or vice versa. So a lot of boat traffic and activity uh, around the boat as well. So when you're outside, the, there is a bit of noise from the bridges. After a while for us, it kind of disappears and just becomes sort of a white noise. And then once you're inside, uh, something about the build of the boat, it kind of disappears completely. So we'll see that once we go inside as well. So we're about 18 feet across and about 42 feet long. Uh, it's called a coastal sea home. There are a handful of these built, all kind of similar construction, primarily wood with a fiberglass base. No longer moving, more of just a barge at the moment. It used to be fully functional, moved around so it still looks and shaped like a boat, but basically a barge right now. And then a little bit of space behind it for a smaller boat. The smaller boat is primarily used for just putting around the lake. So we've got an electric motor hooked up to that. So we'll just charge that on the back of the boat here and that's usually ready to go. So the base of the dock is where we connect our utilities, our shore power, hose, as well as our cable for internet, all kind of run along the side of the dock here and disappear into the dock. Those all hook up to this side of the boat here. All these kind of back storage areas, we've got a freshwater tank in here, our black water tank on the other side, and then a water pump and those kind of utilities over all kind of tucked away in the back of the boat here. Come on in, we'll check out the inside. Welcome in. First thing you may notice is Mia. She's usually going to sound the alarm as we enter the boat. 
whenever we have folks over, this is where everyone kind of congregates and initially gathers. Uh, and this was our first kind of big renovation project when we moved onto the boat. It was a bit smaller when we first moved in. These cabinets and some of the drawers and stuff are new. There were some open shelves here, so good for kind of maybe a, a rental space or something, but living here full time. Expanding the storage space was kind of mandatory first thing. So we added in a couple things over here. This new console is, is fairly recent actually. We built this a while ago, but just finally got it plumbed and we have a filtered water station over here, so that's awesome. Slightly smaller range than we usually had, but this one fits our space super nice. And then the fridge is new as well, so those are actually the same company who bought those together. We got really lucky finding a fridge that fit this space as well as it does. Anything we kind of modify or do, we're trying to keep the look and feel to kind of blend in with the space. So there are already a lot of kind of nautical themes, a lot of brass around the boat. So we continued that throughout with the hardware and such. Whenever we're kind of picking out hardware, we're trying to find something that matches the aesthetic of the boat because there is other brass accents around the boat that are aged and original. So we've tried to kind of match the style of those wherever we can to keep those consistent with one another. Because there is so much kind of warm wood in the area, we wanted to do something much lighter and brighter with kind of the counters and the cabinets there. But then a super dark green for the base because that kind of blends it into the rest of the boat. And this downstairs, you knew we wanted to have lots of greenery and in the winter it's a, it's a really cool kind of darker cabin vibe down here which we love. So the kind of darker green paint plays into that a lot. Weight is definitely a consideration. We still slant a little bit. When we first moved on, we slanted a little bit more. We found all of the heaviest stuff on the boat, the bathrooms, the kitchen, all that happens to be on this left side here. So we do have to be careful with whenever we're creating new storage areas or something, being careful with the materials and trying to go lighter. Aside from that, uh, we've tried to balance our storage as well. So like opposite the kitchen, we have some storage benches. So we have kind of any overflow storage that will move over there. Throughout the boat, there's these channels that kind of run along the side around the boat where we've been able to use those for kind of plumbing and uh, a little bit of storage as well around the sides. With the motion on the boat, especially where we are, we're in a channel where there's a ton of boat traffic coming in, especially on the weekends. So these, we'll hear these clanking around a little bit. We have these little recesses where each of these sit into, so they're slightly spaced. And then we do need to be a little careful if we have things that are, can roll easy. Uh, if we're cooking eggs in the morning, we have little dishes that we'll put those in because those will roll around and fall on the ground, which we learn the hard way really quickly. A lot of the shelving as well has little lips on it so things don't like run off the edges. But we're able to kind of cook pretty large meals and we've entertained larger groups of people out of this kitchen. So it can get a little chaotic if we're both trying to be in here at the same time, but usually we're okay with the amount of counter space that we have. Our kitchen seamlessly kind of transitions into our living room. This space has been trickier. We've probably rearranged this five or six times and I think we've finally settled on an ideal arrangement. And it's an odd space because it does curve. So any square furniture, there's some gaps and stuff behind there that we find interesting ways to accommodate. We do have a lot of storage space up here as well. So this is anywhere where the kind of the whole of the boat wraps around the frame. There's lots of storage for extra space up there. So that's been awesome. And then as far as our decor in here, we try to keep everything pretty low. We do have low ceilings. This kind of fixture here was definitely a huge selling point and focal point for the living room. So we wanted to kind of celebrate that too. So keeping everything pretty low makes the space feel a bit bigger. And with these wraparound windows, we're trying to keep these as unobstructed as possible because this view is fantastic. When the boat was originally built, it was a drivable, uh, it had an engine and a steering wheel. Uh, so the wheel was up here. So if you were driving the boat, you'd be standing here, kind of looking out over here. And there was a console there originally where the steering wheel used to be. We actually have the steering wheel mounted over the dining table now. So we cleared this out and this is now a counter space. A lot of really interesting boats on Lake Union that we'll love to just kind of hang here and watch. We do get a bit of wildlife. We have a lot of ducks that come through, different types of waterfowl, and they're seasonal, so we'll see different types different times of year. We have beavers that come up and uh, they'll eat some of our neighbor's trees over there. They don't bother us much, uh, but we'll see them just kind of swimming around the back of the boat, and occasionally otters come through as well. There's a lot of interesting kind of nautical touches. So like these are kind of a casement style windows, really cool kind of openings. So a lot of this hardware is original, including some of these light fixtures that you see kind of hidden, tucked up under these spaces. All of the woodwork and all the beams and the floors and everything are original. The floors have been refinished right before we bought it. So these are still fresh, but original wood. 
and then everything else we really tried to stay away from. We even see in some of the walls and stuff, there's holes where things used to be previously mounted. So we've kind of left a lot of that there and tried to leave the wood alone because we really love kind of the character and the warmth that it brings. This is our solution to a TV mount. I didn't want to mount anything to this wall here because I didn't want to put big holes in the wall because most TV mounts have giant screws you have to put in the wall. So this is a brass rod usually used for like railing or like foot railing or things like that, that we had a TV mount made for and mounted it to that so that we could avoid putting things in the wall. It also blends in it and makes it look maybe slightly more nautical than a traditional TV stand might. So it kind of ties in together with some of the other elements of the boat a little bit better. The actual bottom of the boat that touches the water is about two feet below us here. So there are some access panels that if we need to uh, get under there or dry it out or whatnot. Um, these panels here, there's a couple you'll see around, uh, are strewn throughout. And then access to the sides of the boat as well. There's panels kind of hidden all throughout the boat in different areas. So we don't store anything in the base of the boat just because that's an area that if there was a leak or we got water or anything down there, that would kind of be a nightmare to clean out. So we leave this area dry uh, just because it's nice to look down here occasionally and validate that there is no water in the boat. So you can see some uh, hints of where some of the original maybe hardware and plumbing were run through. Some of that's been removed now uh, and as well some new construction. So a lot of the hole was rebuilt uh, before we bought it. So you can see this panel here is new mixed with some of the original wood. Uh, so there was a ton of construction done uh, to the base of the boat to get it back to where it is now. So the stairs are all original, super narrow, uh, but very compact. Down here below the stairs, I'm not sure what used to be here, but this is uh, Mia's area. So this is her litter box in there. She's got her own area tucked away, which has been great because we've been able to have all of her stuff in one place. Up here on the way to the dining area, uh, this is an original kind of wine rack that we love because we're able to kind of still have a wine collection, but it's up in these raptors, so out of sight, kind of out of the way. And then behind that is our kind of dinette area. So this we've done a bit of work to. The benches were all original, those were all here, but we replaced the wood and put in some of these pads full of storage as well. So each of these lifts up and we're able to access and, and put things in the back and the bottom. So another super functional kind of storage space. The table was here before. We swapped out again, brought in another one of these brass rods. This used to be woods. So this adds one more kind of brass rod element. And then this lamp is something that we had actually built at a previous house uh, and had installed in a table there uh, and loved it too much to let go of. So we brought that over and installed it here. We kind of built it into the table. So the cables run, there's a little uh, a channel that we routed underneath it. So the light switch is here built into the end. So it would be easy just to turn on and off there. And then the cables run kind of through the back of the boat there. The steering wheel that used to be used to uh, steer the boat, that's this guy here. So we got some of the original hardware. Most of like the engines and things like that were stripped out and uh, discarded, but some of the kind of decor items we have strewn throughout the boat as well, as well as a picture of the boat that we found on the water being used. So moving down, this was a new addition. So we installed this, we use this as our pantry, microwave, dry food storage, etc. in here, our spice rack and then down below, kind of our laundry bins. Uh, so this closet right here is where we have our laundry machine and dryer. Uh, so this space worked really well as a companion to that. We custom built it for this space. At the time, we didn't really have much of a workshop. Uh, so we built most of this and the drawers and stuff for the kitchen out of our spare bedroom. Got it installed here, so it's a super tight fit, built specifically for this space. And Mia likes to hang out here too when the doors are open. Do you want to stay in or are you coming with? All right, we'll see you later, buddy. Bye-bye. <laughs> And then opposite the pantry and our laundry bins down there, we have our laundry machine and dryer, uh, as well as like our Wi-Fi router set up and, and, and that stuff. So these are intended for small spaces. Uh, they were here when we bought them and we love them. They work great. Um, so slightly more compact than maybe a traditional one, but uh, fits this closet perfectly uh, and works for two people. So perfect for us.
And then over here at the end, so this is the original electrical panel. Uh, it used to be uh, primarily a 12 volt system. Most of it still works. We have a mix of power. So we have a, a lot of our larger things uh, run off our shore power. So 120 volt system. And then we have a couple batteries in the back. So this controls anything that runs off our batteries. And then right behind me here uh, is our bathroom, our downstairs bathroom. Super tight bathroom, but very functional. It's got everything you need. So there's a full-size bathtub and shower over here. Again, both ends of the boat are kind of curved. So this wall, you can see curves over here. This kind of tucks in and ties into some of our utilities in the back of the boat. So some of that can be accessed through these panels underneath there as well. So our toilet uh, is what's called a master flush system. So it's like a mercerator style toilet. Our black water tank is essentially right behind this wall in a big storage bin outside of the boat. So this has a tube that goes directly into that. So it saves a ton of water. It's kind of a manual control system where there are separate buttons for adding water and flushing the toilet. Uh, so not a traditional like lever style that does everything for you. Took a little bit of getting used to, but we love it. This one's fantastic. But we'll leave some instructions there for guests. I wonder if we're having a party or something. All right, now that we've seen downstairs, let's take a look upstairs. All right, so here we are on the second floor. This is our office space. This is where both Dylan and I often work from home. We're kind of in a hybrid situation, so we wanted to make sure this is a really functional space when we are here during the work week. So we've installed a monitor here uh, since we are working from home. Occasionally, it's nice to have that second screen. Um, as Dylan showed downstairs, we had a lamp that we had made at a previous home and we wanted to kind of mimic that same style up here. So we built this one as well, installed it into the office space. This is kind of our primary source of light, but we also have one of the original lights up here if we need a little extra lighting. So as you can see, the floors here are slatted and it allows a little bit of space between the boards. This is really nice. It makes the boat feel a lot more open. Um, whether you're upstairs or downstairs, it's kind of all connected in that way. Mia loves to stand up here. We'll be downstairs and kind of play with her through the floorboards. So that's a lot of fun as well. And next we'll walk into the guest bedroom. This room has probably seen the biggest evolution since we first moved onto the boat. There was originally a built-in bed, custom furniture that was built to fit the space specifically. However, we wanted this room to be a little bit more multifunctional. We use it to work out, do yoga, and we have a record player, so it's a good lounge room as well. So we wanted a little bit more flexibility with the bed setup. We got a Murphy bed, found it on Craigslist. We had to do some, some customization to it to make it fit in the space. Uh, this is another room with the curved walls that's uh, very signature for Ron Dante. So um, as you can see with the Murphy bed, ended up having to round some of these corners in order to uh, accommodate the space. So um, this was a really fun project. Dylan did a great job uh, customizing. He did the paint, added trim, and made it feel a little bit more like part of the original boat. Um, installed some hardware, some lighting, uh, some, some plugs to charge your devices while you're sleeping. So it, it does fill up most of the room when it is down, but it works really nicely when we do have guests. For this room, we kind of wanted the decor to be like an ode to the history of Andante. So some of the frames in here are pictures from the original build of the boat. You see kind of the skeleton over here. I assume this is the warehouse uh, space that it was built. We were given these photos by the previous owner who was given them from the original owners. So uh, I think it's cool that we have kept some of these artifacts with the boat. This is the primary bedroom. I think this was probably the biggest selling point for us when we were uh, first touring on Dante. We love the way that the built-in bed overlooks the water, the big wraparound windows. It just lets in a lot of natural light and we're able to take in the view of the lake. Some really good people watching. There's a rowing club nearby. It's very peaceful to watch them first thing in the morning. So we really love this feature of the house. The bed is a storage bed. This is primarily my dresser. Um, there are two closets as well. Those go a long way. During the summer, we have this <laughs> nice window AC unit set up to make it a little bit more integrated into the space. Dylan created this uh, nice little window uh, plug-in 
to seal it up. Um, so that goes away into storage for the winter. We'll swap out for heaters. And then over here, we have a three quarter ensuite bathroom as well. Um, two bathrooms on a houseboat, not too bad. So we really appreciate this extra space up here as well. Pretty small, but uh, super functional. We uh, really appreciate having an upstairs bathroom just so that we're not having to navigate those stairs all the time. So another marine toilet up here. And then we have a shower up here as well that's small, but does the trick. So one of our favorite parts of Andante is the rooftop deck. We love that the full roof is a deck. So we have sort of a lounge seating area, more of a sitting area, and it's been great for entertaining friends and family. We love going up there at the end of a work day, relaxing, reading a book, just watching the drawbridge go up and down and all the boats going by. So that's one of our favorite spaces. Moving on to a houseboat, there was a little bit of a learning curve and we've grown to absolutely love the lifestyle. If we ever do move back onto land, it'll be a really bittersweet into a, a very fun and rewarding chapter of our lives. Thanks for watching this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more tours of floating homes, we have a playlist for you linked in the description and I will see you soon with another unique home tour.